Good morning, guys. We are here inside our amazing van. We've had it for, what, a week today, and we have managed to gut it. And from here, we're going to give the place a, a soap and water down. Once that's all dried, we're going to use um, some rust converter and um, get rid of some of these uh, these smaller... You know, just because we're going to build over the top of this and we don't really want to risk um, having anything develop where we can't see it. So we're going to just make sure all of this goes away. And then we're going to do the subfloor. Okay, so I've fully cleaned out the back of the car. We're just aiming on the floor at the moment. So I've cleaned it out with the soap and water. And then we kind of figured out that we probably need to scrape back the rust a little bit so that any of the paint that is bubbling that may have rust underneath it, we can get to it all. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'll move on to re-sweeping it out and checking if we need to degrease any of it. So as you can see, it's already starting to look better and anyone that is freaking out about us ripping up some of this paint like we have, um, our plan is the floor is gonna be fully covered anyway, um, but we are going to re-spray paint just to give the metal a little bit of extra barrier between the water and the metal. So now that we've gone around and scratched all the rusty areas to make sure that it's exposed properly, we use a product called uh, Rust Converter. So this one actually is a converter and sealer. It's just a super cheap auto brand. Look, at the end of the day, I don't think the brands matter. You might have a preferred, preferred brand, but uh, we're gonna give this one a go. And I'm just gonna go around and paint all the pieces that have um, obvious rust on them. So once I've done that and that's dried, then we will be able to paint. Okay, so we have painted the rust converter on. That's what that ugly brown stuff is. And um, we're gonna paint some of the surfaces with white paint just to add to the protection and um, you know avoid some of the rust coming back. It shouldn't come back with the rust converter, but it's just, you know, so I feel a bit better about it. We won't be able to paint it all, but it's gonna look a little bit nicer than it does now. So. Basically, there's an adjustment that needs to be done to this sliding door just to make it work a little bit better. Uh, in the process, I've realized that the tracks that this run on are really, really gross, and I thought I would show you how they actually get removed. Okay, so I might get one of the little girls to hold this and point this at me, and I'll show you where everything is. But just so you understand, as far as it being dirty, I don't know if you can make that out in there. There's just all sorts of random things under there, and I don't know why. So I'm gonna pull this step out and um, give it a clean and then hopefully adjust the door. So I've discovered that the Mercedes-Benz has a lot of these, what I refer to as torque bits or at least the star sort of hex key screws. Um, for this, you remove this one, which is that size. You remove it from here, okay? And then in behind here is another one. So can you see that? There we go, so then we unscrew that one, which I've already actually done just already. There we go, that one's out. And then, there's this one over here. Okay, so we got that one there. This piece actually just kind of slides up and comes out. Okay, so that's done. We'll give that a clean. You can see that one there, okay. And then, the thing that I really wanted to show you guys that I discovered via another YouTube channel is these right here. So see this? That is where the remainder of your screws are. So keep watching and I'll undo it all and we'll pull it out, okay? These little things that I've showed you here, they were pretty difficult to get out. I hacked at the side with a flat screwdriver. Um, I saw online that you use screws. They drew the, drill the screw into the top, the self-tapping screw, and pull it out. So what I've done is I've pushed this through the top 
created a little hole in them and then pulled them out with it. It is still causing a little bit of damage. I'm not sure how Mercedes would deal with it. I assume they probably would just replace these every single time. So that's the point. We've got several of them. I've still not removed that last one just here. Um, so I'm just gonna do that one now while you guys watch. So I just push this down through here. Give us away. Just screw through the top. And then you would grab a pair of pliers, pull straight up. There we go. There we go. Wow, check this out. Absolute mess. So I will do what I can to clean this up and um, do some adjustments on the door and we'll see what happens. Up underneath, so here we go. Up underneath the track here, is this little guard that obviously stops the ground from getting um, scratched, so it gets scratched itself. Here and here, if you can see that, uh, the little lugs there, see that one? And it's really just clipped over the top of it, so that's not too much of a hassle to get off. But here at the end, in that hole there, is one that is like this. So um, you push it from the bottom underneath the car, you push the center up and it pops out, okay? And then you pull from the top and the plug will come out of the hole. So, you know, these are all them. Basically, I figure car builders are basic, well, basic geniuses, right? They make these really simple things that take a rocket scientist to figure out. <laughs> Most areas in a car will have a drainage hole. Like the intention isn't for the liquid to get into it, but the intention is that if the liquid does, it gets out pretty quickly because the, the last thing you want is for water to lay around in certain areas. That's when the rust will start. Um, so at the end of this channel are two drainage holes. So it's not intended to be clean with water, but the reality is that because of the drainage holes, you can get a little bit of water in there and splash it around. tip for you guys is to not start this when the weather looks a little bit sad because once you've got this track out the sliding door can't close properly so you've got to get it all sort of um, put back together before it um, works the way it's meant to so let's get it done before dinner gets here see that latch that little that little lug here that's what I'm aiming for at the moment so we're just gonna get that up and over the top of it okay I'm sure Mercedes would probably remove this track, but for me, being the backyard mechanic I am, I'm just doing what I can, and this is what I can right now. Okay, and then we've got that hole there, remember? I showed you this before. So these are the kinds of um, lugs that would get replaced. If you took it back to the factory manufacturer and had them service it, they would replace this piece every time it got pulled out. Fitted nicely. Now witness me make a mess of the rack. So yesterday afternoon, I did get the sliding door back together. It didn't end up raining, so that's a positive. And um, basically, I'm still yet to get the adjustments right, so that's still part that I've got to muck around with, and I'll try to show you guys a few little tips with that one, but to be honest, it's really fiddly, so it doesn't make for a very great video. Uh, from here, the next step is, the next major step, is to get that subfloor in. So the insulation, subfloor, um, and then once that's done, we can start the electricals and building from there. So keep an eye out and um, our next van build video will show you a few more tips. And don't forget, 
if we are doing something that you think is completely wrong, we need to hear about it. Please share that information. So have a lovely week and we'll talk soon.